coronavirus disease in Australia. Uh, to the 24 hours to 12 noon today, there have been 121 new cases reported of COVID-19, taking our national total to 24,916. And New South Wales reported three cases, uh, two of those were overseas acquired and one was a contact of a confirmed case. In Victoria, there were 116 cases reported, 29 were locally acquired and 87 are still under investigation. In Queensland, one new case was reported, which is a contact of a confirmed case. There were 15 additional deaths from COVID-19 overnight and 517 people have lost their lives to coronavirus disease in Australia during this pandemic. There are 659 people who have been hospitalised and 38 of those are in intensive care units. We also note that the rate of growth in the past week of cases um, actually shows um, that things are indeed um, becoming under control in Victoria. With that in mind though, I think we all want to acknowledge how difficult it is uh, for Victorians in stage four restrictions and also the remainder of the state under stage three restrictions. It is a light at the end of the tunnel uh, that we're starting to see, of course, with those numbers at 116 cases. Like we always say, we've got to be careful because this is going to be a bumpy ride and it may well be the case uh, that those numbers uh, come up a little bit over the, next coming, over the coming days, but it is a substantial reassurance that the overall trend is clearly down. Clearly all the incredibly hard work that the Victorian community is doing is paying off, not just for Victoria, of course, but for the wider country as a whole. And I think we all have a duty uh, to thank Victorians for what they're doing for the nation. Uh, and in particular, uh, to pick up the phone or get on the internet contact your friends, your family in Victoria, lend them uh, your support because ultimately what is going on down there is for the benefit of the entire nation. And uh, I can take some questions. Um, just on uh, federal projects in Parliament House, a parliamentarian has gone home to get tested for COVID. There's a possibility she might have a connection with a COVID site. What will be the ramifications of um, that parliamentarian testing positive and and so on while everyone's in Parliament House during this, um, during this time? I, I'm not aware of a parliamentarian being tested. Obviously, that's a, uh, something that the ACT um, Chief Health Officer in conjunction with the uh, Parliament um, will, uh, will be managing. Uh, and beyond that, I think it's probably important to wait for the test result before we speculate on exactly what might happen therein. Uh, just on the potential COVID vaccine, developed by Oxford University. Catholic Archbishop Anthony Fisher has come out with concerns about it uh, and it making use of a cell line culture from an electively aborted human fetus with ethical implications. Why would we have ethical concerns about this? Well, I'm aware of those concerns being raised this morning, uh, that the particular cell line that was produced for the vaccine uh, was from uh, an ethically aborted human fetus. That, that is the concern, the concern that was raised by the Archbishop. The reality for vaccines is that they need uh, cell cultures uh, in order for us to grow them. The, the human cell is a really important part of their development. And clearly uh, in the process uh, for the Oxford vaccine, which is one of the uh, one of the leading candidates of, for COVID-19 vaccines, uh, that that was an important part, part of that process. There are strong ethical regulations surrounding the use of any human cell, particularly fetal human cells. And this is a very uh, professional, um, highly powered research unit at Oxford University, one of the world's leading universities. Uh, so I think we can have every faith um, that what the way they, uh, that they have manufactured the vaccine has been against the highest of ethical standards internationally. Is this type of cell line widely used to develop vaccines? 
I, I'm not certain of that, I have to say, uh, not being a vaccinologist, um, but nonetheless the um, answer is the same, that I'm confident that they will be taking the highest ethical standards possible. Scott Morrison on Friday said he had asked um, WA to change any aspects of its board closure to do a change of tune to earlier this year. Have you, um, do you have the same opinion of board closure that you had um, earlier this year in the wake of second waves and what we're seeing in Victoria? Well, I think... You know, there are, every fortnight, there is a discussion on the nature of borders in National Cabinet, and that's an appropriate discussion that takes place between our Prime Minister and the First Ministers. Uh, with regard to our position at the AHPPC, it's clear that in uh, situations where there is significant community transmission, such as in Victoria, the movement of people needs to be restricted. Uh, when and whether you use borders for that restriction purpose is up to the Chief Health Officers. Uh, I think one of the positive things we've seen in recent weeks is where border closures have impacted, particularly on border communities, uh, that has led to very high level discussions between health ministers and health ministers, between premiers and premiers, and uh, equally between Chief Health Officers, uh, which, was, which was occurring previously, of course on minimising the impact that those border closures have. Do you still think border closures should be used only to contain the current outbreak? So we think, as the HPPC, that any measure that's introduced by any government uh, in Australia needs to be proportionate um, to the risk to their population and therefore justified on those bases. Andrew, on the phone. Thank you, uh, Dr Coatsworth. Uh, in light of the uh, comments on vaccines recently, we've seen the British chief medical officer suggest it won't be ready till the winter of 2021 in the Northern Hemisphere. Should we be preparing that this could take at least a year? It's, it's, it's such a challenge to know when a safe and effective vaccine is going to be available. And we've seen some very positive developments uh, with vaccines going into the phase three of their trials, but that doesn't mean that we have any definite dates on, on their delivery. And, and, you know, it is to an extent about uh, expect managing our own expectations, but, but there again, it's about making sure that we don't stop our COVID safe behaviours um, in anticipation of a vaccine uh, being on the horizon. So our best defence at the moment remains physical distance, remains hand, hand washing, remain, remains great hand hygiene. And as I heard the Chief Health Officers of Queensland and New South Wales just reiterate so clearly today in response to their cases, the, the importance of getting tested even with the mildest of uh, respiratory symptoms. So the short answer to your question is it's entirely possible it may be 18 months away. Uh, equally, uh, we may see um, the vaccine sooner. There are so many unanswered questions about the vaccine, but we're very reassured about the sheer um, amount of work that's going in around, around the world, all the resources that are going in uh, to produce what, uh, what will be a safe uh, and effective vaccine. And Josh. Uh, yeah, thank you, Doctor. I appreciate it. Um, it. It's been reported in the US that American authorities could look to uh, fast back. A participant has left the group call. <laughs> so Go again, Josh. AstraZeneca. Sorry, I'll, I'll find anything you want. Um, it's been reported in the US that American authorities could look to fast track the approval for the potential AstraZeneca and Oxford vaccine, um, giving approval for that vaccine before it goes through the normal amount of trials, the normal amount of volunteer test subjects, that sort of thing. Would Australia or is Australia considering, uh, I guess, a similar fast-tracking process for any vaccine that does um, prove to be a, a potentially viable candidate um, or fast-track it in any way? Or, or would we insist on such a vaccine going through um, the, the, the standard, normal, very large testing um, process as we would for any normal vaccine? I guess my question boils down to, will this be a normal process to get this vaccine approved? Or will it be kind of accelerated um, at, at the point where we get to that part of the, the, the argument, I guess? I understand, Josh. Um, so at, at this stage, there are no plans to do anything other than our standard process um, with assessing the safety and efficacy of a vaccine. And uh, that, is, that is a very important message um, for Australians. 
Uh, if there is any adjust adjustment at all to that process, it'll be clearly communicated the reasons why. Um, noting, of course, that um, doing things uh, quickly um, does not necessarily mean that um, corners are being cut. And I think that it would be uh, an absolute uh, requirement um, for us as, as health professionals, for our Australian Therapeutic Advisory Group on Immunisation, ATAGI, or the recently announced Immunisation uh, Committee, uh, which uh, the acronym escapes me, I think it's CITAG that was announced by the Prime Minister and the Chief Medical Officer, uh, there will be no cutting of corners when it comes to uh, safe, uh, demonstrating the safety and efficacy of any COVID vaccine in Australia. Thanks, Josh. And any final questions for today? Thank you very much. <laughs>